Hello underwater photographers, I'm Brent Durand, I shoot a lot of underwater photos, and today we're going to talk about wet lenses for both macro and for wide angle and why you should be using those on your compact camera setup. So there are different applications, whether you're shooting small, tiny subjects in the sand or on the reef, or whether you want big, wide fields of view for shooting those great wide angle photos. There's a number of different wet lens choices out there, and today we're going to talk about the wet lenses and what they do and why you should be using them. This particular tutorial is brought to you by Sea Life, so be sure to check out Sea Life cameras and their Sea Dragon lighting systems at your local dive shop. And let's cue the intro and then get this tutorial going. So like I said before, there's two main types of wet lenses that you're going to use underwater. There are macro diopters, and then there are also wide angle lenses or wide angle conversion lenses. So let's start by talking about the small stuff with macro diopters. Macro diopters are used for shooting all of the small stuff. In short, what they do is magnify the subject through the lens so that you fill up more of the frame. So a macro diopter will pop on the front of your housing or screw into the front of your housing and it will provide that magnification for the small subjects. There's a number of different types of diopters out there with different levels of magnification and they can be used on compact cameras, on mirrorless cameras, and on DSLR cameras. So once you invest in a nice diopter, you can transport it and use it for your whole underwater photography career, maybe even build up a collection with a few different magnifications. This particular diopter is a Sea Life DC Series Super Macro Lens, and it features 52 millimeter threaded mounts. It's a universal threaded mount, which means it will fit on any housing and any housing port that has those 52 millimeter threads. So there's two universal sizes for the threads on your diopters. One would be 52 millimeters, which is more common on compact cameras. The other is 67 millimeters, which you might start seeing on more mirrorless and DSLR ports. If your camera housing has a 67 millimeter threaded mount, then there are step up rings to use this 52 millimeter threaded diopter on those 67 millimeter thread mounts and also vice versa. For example, on the DC2000, you can get a step down ring for those 67 millimeter diopters to use on the camera itself, which has a 52 millimeter thread mount. Another feature with this diopter is the 52 millimeter adapter for the DC series cameras. And this is essentially a bayonet mount because you look at the camera like the DC 2000, you pop on the diopter, really easy. You're ready to go shoot your super macro photos. You can also pop it back off and go back to your regular shots, even put on a different wide angle wet lens. So this bayonet style adapter is really convenient because you can pop the diopter on and off versus trying to screw the diopter in and screw it out and that sort of thing. There are also flip adapters too. So you'll notice on some cameras, um, more on DSLRs and mirrorless, that you can flip the diopter down and then flip it back up, which is really convenient as well. So the benefits of a diopter. We already discussed that you can magnify your subject by using the diopter, and it is essentially a magnifying lens. So take it out, you can hold it on your dive and just look through your eye to look at subjects, magnify subjects, take it out into your backyard, into your driveway, onto the carpet, wherever it is, you know, start looking at your food, your vegetables for dinner, and you can really see that it's simply a magnifying glass that will magnify the image for the camera sensor and make it fill the frame, become a larger image. This Sea Life diopter changes the minimum focus distance of the camera from 3.5 inches down to 1.5 inches. So instead of once you pop this on, instead of shooting through this much water for your subject, you can get this much closer. And what that does is one, it lets you fill the frame more with your subject because you're closer. But two, it lets you eliminate water between the front of the camera and the subject. We know that the more water we shoot through creates a hazier image, so we want to be as close as possible. And by using this diopter, we can get a lot closer, eliminate a lot of that water, more than 50% of the water between the camera and the subject, resulting in a clearer, sharper image with brighter colors, bolder colors, and more shadow differentiation. So it's a really nice tool when you're trying to shoot these small subjects. So that's it with macro diopters. Definitely a nice accessory to have on any camera system. I would say to get the macro diopter once you have lighting in place, because then you can really benefit from using your strobe or video light to light the subject, while also magnifying it and reducing water. Next, we're gonna talk about wide angle wet lenses. Wide angle wet lenses. Should I do the eye thing? Uh, 
I figure you might be tired of that one. Anyways, wide angle wet lenses are critical for shooting wide angle underwater. Now you can shoot with just the regular camera lens and different lenses are going to have different fields of view. They'll have different millimeter lengths that you'll look at in the lens specs. And by adding a wide angle wet lens, you're increasing that field of view. So for instance, on the DC2000, you will add the 0.75 wide angle conversion lens. Again, with the bayonet mount we discussed before for very convenient on and off. And this will increase the field of view by 33%. So instead of your field of view looking like this, now it's going to look like this. If you added a different one, like the 0.5 wide angle wet lens, then you're increasing the field of view on this particular camera by 100%. So these different wide angle wet lenses are really beneficial because they increase that field of view. So there's an obvious benefit to increasing the field of view, which is that you can fit more in the frame, which is awesome. You look at a, a regular focal length and it's it's good for a fish portrait or you know mid-range type of things you know something about this big I would say because you can get fairly close to it light it well and shoot it but the wide angle lens will excel when you want to shoot reef scapes or your dive buddy or a wreck or close focus wide angle with a sunburst or the dive boat or any number of things there um, because it increases that field of view which does two things it's that that wider scene that you're fitting in the frame but it also allows you to get closer to the subject so for the same reason as we talked about with the macro diopter by adding a larger field of view through a wide angle wet lens we get closer to the subject and minimize the water between the subject and the camera and again that makes the photo a lot clearer it makes the subject a lot clearer and really allows us to light the scene with wide angle the strobes no matter what you're using or video lights are only going to go so far so the closer we can get the more lighting variety and more light positioning opportunities we have to light the subject and the clearer and crisper the subject's going to be so wide angle wet lenses are very useful for that sort of thing so this particular 0.75x from sea life comes with the adapter for 52 millimeter a bayonet style mount but again you could screw these in manually into a different port at 52 millimeters or you could even look for one of those flip adapters that comes down for a convenient popping on and off of the wet lens. So I like to use the wide angle wet lens for everything large. For the small stuff like nudibranchs, shrimp, small crabs, I'll use the macro diopter. For mid-sized stuff, maybe a large damselfish like Garibaldi here in California, or for lobsters, I will use a regular field of view of the lens with no wet lens on it. And for the wide angle stuff, so whether it's a sea fan, a kelp forest scene, a reef scape, a dive buddy, a dive boat, split shot, any sort of thing like that, I will use the wide angle wet lens because it's so easy just to pop on, get that large field of view and go from there. The way I set up to get in the water is usually to have the wide angle wet lens attached and I will use the macro diopter attached to a lens caddy for easy transportation. And by transportation, let me show you a quick magic trick, which is that. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? This just appeared like this. But anyways, this is the lens caddy, so it's attached to the side. You'll see we've got the wide angle wet lens right here. We'll take the macro lens and with that bayonet mount adapter ring, it just connects right there. So if we want to switch it up during the dive, we might take this off. And a little hard to do, not in the water. This stuff's heavier on land than in water where it's more neutrally buoyant. You pop that on, now you're ready for macro mode and can go ahead, you know, adjusting your, your lights, your strobes for the shot. So really nice to have the lens caddy so you can switch back and forth between the different lenses. Let's go again. No need for words, right? So that's basically it. Wide angle wet lenses for both macro and for wide angle. The wide angle wet lenses, sometimes referred to as wide angle conversion lenses, but they do the same thing. So the one important thing to keep in mind is that these are designed to use in the water and will work best in the water with a little layer of water between the camera and the lenses. So with that said, let's talk about a few quick tips for shooting with your wet lenses. Tip number one, you want to burp the lens. So I mentioned having water in between the camera port and the wide angle wet lens right here. There's gonna be a little bit of water in there, but what happens is you jump into the ocean and you've got a little layer of air in there and that might leave a little bit of bubbles which are gonna show up in your photos all the time, might even stop your camera from focusing. So what you want to do is get in the water, detach the wide angle wet lens, move your hand around, create some water to get rid of any bubbles and then reattach the wet lens. So I like to do this every time I get in the water to make sure bubbles won't be present on the lenses and messing up my photos. 
Tip number two is that with certain wide angle wet lenses, you want to make sure the lens is attached to the camera system via a lanyard. With the bayonet system, the lenses are easy to add and remove, but if you're sitting there over blue water or at the end of a very deep dive, you don't want the lens to be removed by accident if someone comes on a up the line on a crazy surface ascent or loses control or loses a bit of buoyancy, kicks your camera. You just never know what's going to happen. It might get bumped and here goes your nice wet lens. So what you want to do is create a lanyard system or something that allows you to use a lens. The rope won't get in the way of your shot, but also allows you to remove it, reattach, so there's no way you're going to lose that lens. So something to figure out once you start working with any sort of wet lens underwater. And tip number three, this is for the macro diopters. And one of the important things here is that you're magnifying your subject. You're also going to magnify any sort of movement you're making with your buoyancy or if the camera's moving around uh, trying to focus on the subject. So really, really focus on your buoyancy. Make sure you're using a muck or a macro stick to help stabilize yourself and not touch the reef or the sand or whatever the substrate is that where you're trying to shoot um, because that will one, help protect the environment, but two, also help you stabilize yourself so you can learn to really focus the camera and focus on the part of the subject that you want to focus on. So very important to practice your buoyancy before you start getting into the macro diopters or at the same time, just as long as you're very aware of being totally still and keeping the camera level and also not silting up the, the dive environment for everyone else. So that's pretty much it. Wet lenses. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope that you subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. A big thanks to Sea Life for presenting this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks.